Hey guys, it's April in Wisconsin. Ground's a little soft, but I'm down here for a reason, getting a little bit wet. <laughs> and that is, I'm here to show you guys something I've been trying to do for three years. I wanna teach you how to shoot straight up. The gun I'm using today to teach this lesson is my Daystate Wolverine B uh, with the carbon fiber bottle and the hug it moderator. Scope is a Hawk Sidewinder 30 Tactical and my scope mounts are made by Sportsmatch. They are the vertical adjustable scope mounts. <laughs> so to teach this properly, I really need to start from the very beginning and give you a little bit of background. One minute here. When you shoot a gun, this is an air rifle, but any rifle, you have two zeros. A zero is defined by a spot where, when the bullet crosses the plane of the scope. Every single gun at some level has to have the scope pointing down a little bit. Sometimes, like with these adjustable mounts, I can do it physically. Other times you adjust the reticle via the turrets and that's how you aim your scope down. It needs to point down somewhat with respect to the barrel because if there was no aiming down, the bullet would just fly straight out here, drop off, and it would never actually intersect the crosshairs. So every gun has two zeros. The first one is when the bullet's heading up, crosses the plane of the scope, and the second one is when it's coming back down, crossing the plane of the scope again. For this lesson, we will be talking always about the first zero. The zero for this gun is 20 yards. And this is what I call a zero. <laughs> but aiming straight up, teaching a lesson straight up, has its challenges, such as how the heck to get the target up there. Let me show you my new toy. This. <laughs> this is how we're gonna pull this off. Now mind you, I have never tried this before. So before we raise my target into the air, let me give you a little background on shooting up. Now many of you might know that when you shoot up at an angle, you can actually just use the horizontal angle to your target, however far away it is, and then use that distance as your hold. In other words, it may be 95 yards at an angle, but the base of whatever you're shooting at is 80 yards. 80 yards is the distance you range at for that shot. Now that works up until about 45 degrees. From 45 degrees to straight up, things start to break down. And at straight up, they've completely broken down. There's no more gravitational pull on the pellet at all with respect to the vertical component of the scope. When you take your aim from like this to like this, from a horizontal to a vertical, you no longer are going to have two zeros. That second zero is gone. So essentially what happens, that pellet crosses the line of the scope and just keeps right on going. So basically you have one zero. Like I said, my Wolverine here is set at 20 yards. But here's your rule of thumb. Even at 20 yards, when that shot is taken, gravity's still pulling on the pellet. So even though it's heading up, it's still being forked down a little bit. Your rule of thumb is this. For all 800 to 900 foot per second air rifles, your basic air rifles that we're all using, cut your first zero down by 33%. So in other words, it'll take 13 yards for the pellet going down the center of the barrel to intersect with the line of sight going down the center of the scope. The distance right here is two inches. So every 13 yards, the pellet will be moving up two inches. So the first zero at 13 yards is when it's zero. But the next 13 yards, it should be two more inches higher. At about 50, 52 yards, this should be shooting six inches high. And this is why you're missing those squirrels on the top of the tree. Because you're putting it on their head and it's flying over top of them. So anyway, on to it. The wind is on and off a little bit here, but this is as good as it's gonna get. This is springtime in Wisconsin, it's brutal. Let's take this thing up and see if my rules of thumb play out. That was a miserable failure, which means plan B. Okay, second try. It's about a week later for me, 
seconds later for you. I have rigged things up differently on my drone here. Um, basically, the closer you can get the target to the drone, the more stable it is. However, the more likely I am to shoot my drone. <laughs> so, um, I have a compromise here, and I tested this a lot at home, and I, I know it's gonna work this time. I've also moved positions. I'm on drier ground here. We've been getting a lot of rain, so I picked a drier spot on the farm. So without further ado, let's get this in the air and try not to shoot it down. I'm gonna change my angle a little bit. 90 degrees just isn't gonna work out right now. I'm gonna blast that drone. The wind is pushing from that way to that way, so it'll be pushing the target away from me. That'll help a little bit, creating a little bit of an angle to it. But I also am gonna take it about 80 or maybe 70 degrees. So as I said last time, uh, you want to shoot at about two-thirds of your primary zero. So at 90 degrees, it'd be about 13 yards, and at 70 degrees, it's about 75%, so about 14 yards. Really, it's about a, a yard difference. So I'm going to take it in the air, and we're going to shoot it at 14 yards, and at 28 yards, and at 42 yards, and at 14 yards, I'm going to hold dead on. That should be a zero, and then at 28 yards, I'm going to hold two inches low, that should be a zero, and at 42 yards, I'm gonna hold four inches low, and that should be a zero. These are all hold under shots. You see what I'm doing here? For every 14 yards, I got two inches to make up between here and here, because gravity, out the window. We're shooting laser guns today. When you're shooting up and down, think of your gun as a laser gun. All right, drone in the air. There we are at 15 yards. Drone is holding position. This should just be a hold on crosshairs. Crap, I forgot to put my scope cam on. Hang on. Safety. Oh, good grief. Come on, Ted. There we go. Not perfect. Certainly close enough. I feel like I'm hunting a swarm of hornets. Here we go. Moving around a little bit. Hold still, you bugger. Safety. Okay, 28 yards. Now we are holding two inches low. I'm, I'm gonna ballpark this. Just blowing around a little bit. But because the camera's in slow motion, you'll still be able to see that maybe my crosshairs weren't exactly where they needed to be, two inches low. But you're gonna see that the impact is two inches high of my crosshairs. That's the lesson to be taken away here. That sun's right in my eyes, making it just a pain in the butt. I have no idea where that hit, but I bet it hit two inches above where I was shooting. <laughs> All right, take it to 42. All right, uh, now four inches under. down and see that target. Okay. I think we may have learned something. Oh, let me shut this off. Thank you, drone. Check out our target. I think my first shot was on the mark, 
And the second shot was off to the right due to a, eh, we'll just call it me. <laughs> but my hold was right. You see the, the elevation hold was right. And then I held four inches low on a moving target and boom, I just nailed a squirrel on a floating limb at the top of that pine tree. That feels pretty dang good, guys. <laughs> but lo and behold, you can see then how for every 14 yards I go up, I need to hold two more inches lower. So if we'd have gone up to 56 yards, I would have had to held six inches low. So basically what I'm saying is you need to learn how to shoot two ways. This is completely different than this. The rules are different, everything about it's different. Now in a future video, maybe I'll tackle that gray area in between, because that's actually where it's really tricky and where you have a lot of fun forces pulling and tugging at the pellet. And now you know how not to miss that squirrel at the top of the tree. So for practice, I recommend find yourself a nice tall pine tree and shoot the pine cones off it. <laughs> that's how I learned when I was younger. That's how I figured out how to do this before I actually knew what was happening. Get your gun, go outside, find a tall pine tree, practice up on it, let me know in the comments if this video helped you and if it worked for you. As always, thank you for watching. Bye. Oh, before I get out of here, I'm going to double your lesson. The rules for shooting down are exactly the same as the rules for shooting up. So if you find yourself in the rare case where you're actually firing down, same rules apply. <laughs> See you guys.